So, welcome back to Sky School's uh, Tips and Tricks. Today, talking about motor safety. Key thing to remember is 70% of accidents with paramotoring happen on the ground, running the engine. However, if you have a good set of techniques and practices which you follow religiously, there is no reason why you should have any incidents at all. So I'm now gonna take you through what we do in the school to check out the engine prior to each flight and also how to run it up on our back safely. So pre-solo flight checks. I have a very simple system. I like to do the non-working parts first followed by the working parts. And the first thing I check is my cage. I want to make sure that all of the connection points with my cage are secure, that the mesh isn't is tight and nothing is it can go through that and it isn't loose and i'm going to make sure it's symmetrical it's following my hands around so that there's no chance the propeller can come in contact with the cage i'm then going to come to my chassis which uh, connects the cage yet again check those connection points another little thing to do is just to look at the welds to see if there's been any damage to that because of a hard landing or transportation I'm also going to come to my engine and I'm going to give it a little bit of a twist while looking at the rubber engine mounts to see if there's any damage or deterioration and to ensure that they're nice and secure and attached to this back plate. I like to check my harness from the top to the bottom. So you start with the attachment points on the chassis. You move down into the top of the shoulder straps where you want to check your connections for your for your reserve and yes always fly with a reserve it's better to have one and never need it than need one and not have it i want to make sure that the bridle for my reserve is correctly rooted and there's no chance it can go back into the propeller or the exhaust and it's not going to come out when i am doing my weight shift in flight as i come down i'm going to check out my hang points and also my carabiners, make sure they're in good condition. Most important part of your paramotor. If these fail, you're gonna need your reserve. Little tip here, always attach your throttle to your carabiner. Now it can't get damaged, can't pick up sand and dirt, and then start sticking, resulting in full power when you don't want it. As I come down, I've also got my reserve handle on the right-hand side on this paramotor. I just want to make sure these are stowed correctly and there's no chance this can come out without me actually wanting it to come out. As I come down, I can check the attachment points of my harness. This has a split ring, a split O-ring on it, which makes sure it, this shackle cannot come undone. Make sure they're still in place. Follow it down. The webbing's in all good condition. Make sure the buckles work. There's no sand in them or dirt. The leg straps release and also connect correctly. When we come to our seat board, make sure that's in good condition. We don't want to have a crack in our seat board because that could change our weight shift. Same goes for our secondary seat board. If we have a speed bar system, we want to make sure that it's nicely secured using this bit of Velcro here so that can't trip us up on takeoff. And finally, is this harness attached the bottom of my chassis, which it is. So once I've done these non-working parts, cage, chassis, harness, I go to the working parts. Prior to every time you start up your paramotor, always check that your throttle releases. The last thing you want is to start up your engine for, them, for this to be stuck on full power. Where you can double check that is coming around and looking at the carb and making sure that that spring actually releases the throttle on the carburetor. On this particular throttle, there's also cruise control. 
I want to make sure that's not stuck on and restricting the throttle. At the same time, I want to make sure that that stop button depresses and works. And when I am going to stop it, I need to hold it down for at least three seconds to make sure the engine doesn't re-engage. So don't just press the button, press and hold. Then, it's a very simple Velcro strap. I just want to make sure that there's no damage because it can deteriorate over time along the strap here. So just make sure that is secure and it's not coming apart. Then I'm going to follow my throttle cable and while looking at the carb, I'm going to have a look to see if there's any effect by giving it a kink on the carburetor. And there isn't. Because if there is, you might find suddenly you put a bit of brake on, create a bit of flexion in the throttle cable, and suddenly the engine revs up. And that means we need to adjust our throttle cable. On this particular design, there's a bit of Velcro on the swan neck torque arm here, which pre prevents it from going back even further into the propeller. However, there's another technique which I'm going to show you when it comes to holding the throttle on the ground so that it is impossible for it to go back into the propeller. When you're finished with the throttle, back on the carabiner, get into that habit. So after the harness, we move to the fuel tank. First of all, is there fuel in it? Second of all, is it mixed, because this is a two-stroke engine? And thirdly, how old is it? If you've got fuel which is more than a month old, I would suggest mixing in fresh fuel to make sure that you're not going to be running your, your motor too lean. Then I want to make sure that this cap is nice and secure. It's quite easy to forget to put this back on. So one tip is when you're refueling it, just to stick it in your pocket and you know where it's going to be. And then once you've finished, take it back out, put it back on, make sure you don't cross thread the cap nice and tight so it can't come off. I then have a look at my tank just to see if there are any obvious signs of damage or anywhere that the fuel could be leaking from. One issue which used to occur was the exhaust rotating around into the fuel tank. So you want to make sure that that can't happen in your particular model. Then I follow the fuel lines up, make sure they're nice and secure, up to my primer bulb. We don't want to have too many air bubbles. If there is, it could be a sure sign that you've got a problem. You need to get that fixed. Up we come, finally, to the carburetor. Fuel lines look good, pump looks good. I also want to check that my fuel tank is securely fastened to my chassis. So, first thing is the pull start. We're going to go from top to bottom. I want to make sure that this knot doesn't come undone. Because if it does, my pull start system is going to wind itself up and it's going to be a bit of a pain getting it back out again. So just make sure that's all in good condition and it's not starting to deteriorate on the lines. There's no friction, there's no damage to this. And also, pull through very slowly, you should be able to feel compression. Now I come round to the other side. So I'm going to start with my air filter. I want to make sure that it can't rotate round into my propeller. I then follow it round, I have a look for any signs of damage or any cracks, making sure that this rubber mount is secure and there's no chance of it perishing or deteriorating or coming off in flight. And this Jubilee clip is nice and tight. And then I come down to my carb and I'm just looking at the fuel lines and where they connect and the other line that goes into the crank making sure they're nice and secure and tight. Just below that, there are some electrical cables, I'm making sure that they're nice and secure, there's no deterioration, there's no damage, and I follow the HT lead to the spark plug. I can take that off, I can just make sure my spark plug can't come undone with my fingers, same with the nipple, make sure it's nice and secure, and I can just push that back on, make sure it's nice and tight. Then, as I follow it down, by checking out my springs. These have lock wires on them to make sure they can't come undone. And all of my bolts and nuts are nice and secure. As I come from the cylinder, 
down into the exhaust. I'm yet again checking all attachment points, all connections, making sure these springs are in good condition and not deteriorating. You'll notice that on some parameters they've actually marked these bolts and nuts with some ink, which is a very good visual reference point to see if they've shifted at all. I'm then going to have a good look at my exhaust, making sure there's absolutely no damage on this expansion chamber and they're in good condition. Up to my silencer, checking out all of these nuts and bolts. And finally, the connection on my silencer is in good condition and it's not pointing towards my fuel tank. I'm then going to come back up and check out the reduction drive on my prop, make sure the belt's in good condition. I'm going to check out all of these, uh, the prop hub itself, make sure these are nice and secure. I can then bring my propeller up vertically and just push it gently back and forward to feel if there's any damage or deterioration in the bearing. And finally, follow the leading edge and the trailing edge with your finger to make sure that's all in good condition before rotating it around just to ensure it's not going to hit any part of the cage or the ground. I then finish to check all of my engine mountings onto the chassis. Okay, so now I've got the paramotor on. Just before I clip into my wing, I want to make sure that my leg straps are done up and nice and secure. My chest strap is done up and secure. Two carabiners and the hang points are correct. My helmet is tight, not going to come off. The reserve handle, no chance that can come back into the propeller. Then I'm going to come to my throttle cable. Rather than just grab it, leaving a lot of slack underneath my arm, I'm just going to bring my arm underneath. I'm going to take it like this, and now it cannot go back into my propeller. You also notice I've got a helmet on and a headset. Prior to every startup, always make sure the area behind you is clear and shout clear prop. If you have an assistant to help you, even better, but make sure you brief them correctly. Clear prop. Clear prop. If you haven't got an assistant to help you start and you have a pull start parameter, make sure you've primed it. Okay, make sure you've got your technique down. I know this is a flash starter, so I need to just flash start it up by pulling it through gently, then clear prop. Very easy. When it comes to killing the engine, make sure you hold that button down for three seconds so it can't re-engage. So, final tip to leave you with, always start the parameter on your back, never start it on the ground. There have been countless number of accidents with people starting both pull start and electric start parameters on the ground, and it does not end well. So, if you want to remain with all your limbs and your flesh intact, I strongly recommend you have a solid technique, having done your checks, and always start it on your back. Happy flying, safe landings, see you in the air.